So one more time we're going to go through the steps for a hypothesis test and then we'll look at each step in more detail. So step one is to determine the null and alternative hypotheses. Step two is to choose the level of significance, alpha. Step three is to compute the test statistic. Step four is to find the p-value and determine the initial conclusion. And step five is to state the final conclusion. So we're going to go through one example of hypothesis testing and go through all five steps. So the first step for this problem would be first to write the claim as a complete sentence. So here where it says a research, researcher claims that the mean length of a call has increased since then, we want to put all the details into our statement. So we'll say the mean length of a call has increased since March 2006 when it was found to be 3.25 minutes. So this tells us what parameter we're talking about, the mean. This talks about how it has changed, that it's increased, and it also has the value 3.25 that we need to know. So we want to translate this statement into our alternative hypothesis. What parameter are we testing? The mean. So we're going to use the symbol mu. What inequality should we use? Increased translates to a greater than because it's gone up since March 2006. And the value of the parameter in the claim was 3.25 minutes. So we just take those three things and write our alternative hypothesis. So we have mu is greater than 3.25. For our null hypothesis, we replace the greater than with an equal sign. So there's our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. We already found our null and alternative hypotheses. Now we're going to find our significance level. This was already chosen for us because the problem tells us to test the claim at a 5% significance level. But we do still have to state what that's going to be in our hypothesis test. So for step two, we would write alpha equals 0 0.05. Now step three is to compute the test statistic. So here's where we have to choose the right formula depending on what parameter we're testing. So it makes a big difference here whether we're testing a mean or a proportion. For a mean, we're going to use this formula. So this is t naught. This is x bar, which comes from our sample. That's our sample mean. This is mu sub zero, which comes from our hypotheses. S is our sample standard deviation. N is our sample size. Back to our example. In this problem, since we're testing a mean, we're going to use this formula to compute our test statistic. So the mu zero comes from the hypotheses. Since our null hypothesis was that mu is equal to 3.25, the number that we want to use for mu sub zero in the formula is the 3.25. The other numbers in this formula all come from the sample data. So we were told that the sample has a mean of 3.42, that's our sample mean, a sample standard deviation of 0.9, so that's S, and the N was 81 because we had a sample of 81 cell phone calls. So we're plugging all of those numbers in, and remember your sample mean comes first on the top of this formula, and this again is the number from our hypothesis. So if we do those calculations, we come out with t0 equals 1.700. And that is our test statistic. Our alternative hypothesis in this problem was that the mean is greater than 3.25. Since this inequality is pointing to the right, this makes it a right-tailed test. And in step three, we found our test statistic was 1.700. So here's our picture. Since we have a right-tailed test, we're going to be shading to the right of our test statistic. So here's our test statistic is 
So what we're doing is finding the area in this right tail. Or we can think of it as finding the probability that t is greater than 1.700. Now for this you can use the tcdf function in your calculator. This works like the normal CDF function in that we put in a lower bound and an upper bound. So since we're going from this number to the right, this would be our lower bound and we'd use a large positive number for our upper bound. The only difference here is that we don't need mean and standard deviation, we need degrees of freedom. So again the degrees of freedom here is n minus 1. Since our n was 81, then our degrees of freedom is 80. So if you put this in your calculator you should get something like 0 .0465. So that is our p-value. In other words, that's the area that's shaded in blue over here in the right tail of this distribution. In step 4a we found that the p-value was 0 .0465 and the significance level that we had in step 2 was 0 .05. This is one reason it's important to go ahead and write that down in step two, because if you don't have it written down, then you have to go back to the problem and look it up again, or figure out what you had decided on for your alpha. If you have it written down in step two, then you don't have to do any extra work. So now we're gonna compare this p-value and the alpha. So the inequality that we're looking at is p is less than or equal to alpha. In this case, here's our p-value, here's our alpha. So the question is, is this a true statement or a false statement? It's true because 0 0.0465 is less than 0 0.05. So since it's true, that means we're ha gonna have a positive conclusion, which is reject the null hypothesis. This is all we need to write for our initial inclusion conclusion, either reject the null hypothesis or do not reject the null hypothesis. In step 4b we had a positive con conclusion which said reject the null hypothesis. That means our final conclusion will also be positive. And the claim that we stated in step 1 was that the mean length of a call has increased since March 2006 when it was found to be 3.25 minutes. So we're just going to take this and restate it and our final conclusion will say there is sufficient evidence to support the claim and then we're just restating this claim right here. So there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that the mean length of a call has increased since March 2006 when it was found to be 3.25 minutes. Again a positive conclusion, again a positive initial conclusion of reject H not leads to a positive final conclusion saying there is sufficient evidence to support the claim.